In today's video, I'm going to show you how to import and edit a photo in Lightroom on iPad. Now, personally, I do prefer the Lightroom Classic version on a Mac, but if you don't have a Mac or just want to be able to grab an iPad and go edit somewhere, well, this video is for you. So let's get right into it. First off, we need to take a photo. So here I got the Canon R8 with a 16 millimeter lens. We're just gonna turn it on just like this, set up our settings. That looks pretty good. All right, now we got our photos. Now, you can import the photo straight off the camera with USB-C, but for today's video, we're just going to pop the card out, just like that, and import it onto iPadOS. Now we're just gonna open up Lightroom just like this, and then import our photo like that. Now, we're gonna go back to the main menu and select Add Photos, just like that, from Connected Card slash Camera. All right, we're gonna grab the most recent photo, hit Import, now it's done. Now the cool thing about Lightroom on iPad is it will copy the photos over. So once you're done copying, you can just pull out the drive and it's done. And it will upload the photos to your Lightroom account. For bigger projects, say you're editing 2000 photos, you're gonna wanna do that on the Mac version with Lightroom Classic so it doesn't copy all those photos over. It'll take forever and fill up your storage. But if you just wanna edit a couple photos, this is the way to go. All right, so we're gonna tap on our photo and right here you can see we can edit the photo. Now we can go and change our light. So maybe we wanna bring up the exposure just a little bit, maybe increase the contrast. All the settings are right here for light. We can bring down our highlights, increase our shadows, increase our whites, maybe pull down our blacks. That looks a lot better. For the settings, you also have curves over here. So if you wanna adjust your curves, you could do that here as well. We're just gonna leave it at zero. And you can also adjust the red, green, and blue curves as well. Now, you will see there's also an HDR button here. You can use that if you wanna edit in HDR, but personally, I don't do that because it is a little bit complicated and breaks most of the time. Anyway, that's our light settings. We can hide that just like this and then enable the color. Now we can change our color temperature and our exposure and stuff with the raw settings because this is a raw photo. And that's the neat thing about Lightroom on iPad. For example, if you take a photo on a camera and just import it wirelessly and edit it on your phone, it's not gonna be raw. But because we imported it from the card, it is raw. So we have those raw controls. All right, so let's change our white balance just a little bit, maybe our tint to just a little bit more purple. There we go. Like, that looks pretty good. And then we can change our saturation, stuff like that. Now, color mix and color gradings, we're gonna add that color change to it. So in color mix, we can, for example, if we wanted to change the blue hue to be a little bit more green, we could do that here. Maybe make it a little bit more blue, just like that. We can change the saturation of just the blues and the luminance. Um, personally, I don't know adjust the luminance too much because it kind of looks weird sometimes, but if you want to, that's there. And that's gonna be the same for all the hues. So if I wanna change maybe the skin tone colors to be a little bit less saturated, maybe the hue just a little bit, like that, you can do that right there. Now, below that, we're gonna have color grading, and this affects the mid-tones, highlights, and shadows of the image. So if I wanna change just the shadows to be a different color, I can do that here, versus mid-tones, versus the highlights. And that's all adjusted right here. You can also change the luminance and the blending and stuff like that, so that is there. And then below that, we have all of our effects, so texture, clarity, dehaze, um, noise, stuff like that. And I'm just gonna leave that as default because I don't really need that for this photo. But if you need to do that, that would be right there. And then below that we have detail, so that's gonna be sharpening. And then below that we've got optics, which is just the lens correction and stuff like that. We're just gonna leave that enabled most of the time. And then geometry. So if you wanna distort the image, um, we can zoom it out a little bit. There we go. We're just gonna leave that at zero because we don't need that for this image. All right, let's go down to the next menu. We got presets. So if you don't wanna color grade it yourself, you just wanna apply a preset, you can do that here. You can also create presets and load other presets and stuff like that. We're just not gonna use that for today. Um, I don't use presets. I usually just color grade based on the image, but if you wanna do that, you could do that there. Next below that we have cropping. So we can drag it and make it smaller. We can move it in, zoom it in, zoom it out. We can also change our ratio. Let's make this one by one. There we go, maybe zoom it in just a little bit. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then we could also invert the image and do other stuff here. So if we wanted to change it like this, flip it, rotate it, all that kind of stuff, you can do that here. And straightening, you can just grab the bottom bar and move it around like that. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna hit done, and now we can move down to the next tab, which is going to be healing. For this, if we wanted to heal, for example, maybe a piece of dust on a shirt, we could just tap it it's gonna go away. You can also change this to remove and to clone. If you wanna remove something or clone it, you can do that there. You can also change your brush size and then change where it's grabbing that data from. All right, the next tab is gonna be masking and you can do a lot here. So we can just grab a mask. We can just say, hey, select the subject. It's gonna detect me as in front of the background. There we go. Now we can increase the exposure of that, the contrast maybe. 
bring down the highlights, all the settings just for that mask. So we can just do that right there. That looks pretty good. Bring me from the background out a little bit more. Now we can change our color temperature. We don't have all the hue control that we did with the other nodes, but that's good to go. So if you wanna change that, you can do that. Same with effects, detail, optics, it's all there per mask. Now, if we wanna add and subtract from the mask, we can just tap on the mask, we can hit add and subtract, and then we can use the brush tool to change that mask. Now we can add another mask if we wanna do a brush or a linear gradient or um, select the background or the sky or something like that. Um, that is all gonna be here. And then to change the brush size, for example, if we add a brush, we can change all of our brush size over on this side. And it's gonna be great if you have an Apple Pencil for this point, you can use your fingers, but an Apple Pencil works great for just coloring in and selecting your mask. Now, we're not gonna do the separate mask because we don't really need to for this video, but for example, if you wanted to mask out the eyes, you could do that real quick. Um, below that, we're gonna have lens blur. This is a new beta feature, so if we wanted to add a blur to the background um, even more than the f-stop of the lens, you could do that here. Um, we're not gonna do that because it's not really necessary for this photo, but that's where you would do it. Now, below that, we got some other stuff for settings, so if you wanna revert to previous settings, you could do that there, and the one below it. Um, we're not gonna touch that because we already graded this photo. Now, below that, we have star ratings at the bottom, so if we wanted to rate this photo, we could do that there. We also have comments, tags, and info. So we can see the info of this. This is a 6K raw photo. It's got one F1250 of the second, F45, ISO 800 from the R8. You can rate it here as well. You can also add tiles and stuff like that. So that's kind of the basics for the settings. Um, you can do a ton of stuff in here, get a ton of different looks. And you can do most of that in the main tab, but you can also use masks and things like that. Now, to export the photo, we can just hit export up here. We can save the copy to device. We can export it with custom settings. And you're gonna need custom settings if you do HDR. But remember, we aren't doing HDR for this photo, so we don't need to worry about that. So we can just hit export as. We can change our settings here. So if we wanna do JPEG versus maybe a DNG or a TIFF or whatever. Most of the time for exporting, I'll just hit export. I'll just hit add border and share. Maybe if I wanna add it a border, that looks pretty good. We'll hit share right there. Now we can decide what to do with it. We can airdrop it, we can message it, we can share it any way we want. For this case and scenario, I'm just gonna hit save image. Now it was shared. We can open up photos, and there it is, with the border and everything. If you don't wanna add the border, we can just export, save the copy to the device, and it'll save it the exact same way, just without the border. We go back over, next photo, it's there. All right, that's gonna be about it for today's video. If you have any other further questions about Lightroom um, or DaVinci Resolve, those are kind of two softwares I do tutorials on, let me know in the comment sections down below. Um, that's gonna be about it for today's video, but before we go, I wanna tell you about our sponsor. Motion Array, if you're a content creator like myself and wanna level up your videos, check out Motion Array. With pre-made templates, transitions, audio effects, and even plugins, Motion Array is the place to go. They even have music sound effects and footage as well. They've basically got everything you need to make your videos look better. To get $50, off your annual subscription, check out the link below. Thank you to Motionary for sponsoring the channel and back to the video. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. If you want to help out and subscribe and hit that like button, that would be awesome. Let me know if you have any other questions for future videos and I'll see you in the next video.